When you think of a person trying to influence others to get what they want, what comes to mind? Do you think of a lawyer skillfully playing to the whims of a jury? Maybe a, a cringy used car salesman comes to mind, or that creepy guy trying to learn pickup, or maybe a politician. But in reality, we all do this, all the time, though maybe to a lesser extent than politicians. Hopefully. Although everyone's got their own style of negotiation, the most important thing that it always boils down to is leverage. Now, if you try to search what is leverage, you're gonna get a whole lot of results about real estate, but <laughs> leverage is really just the power that you wield in any negotiation. And while that does include the negotiation for a bank loan based on your potential earning ability, it also applies to the knowledge, skills, and assets you possess that will allow you to negotiate for, say, a higher salary at work. Leverage tends to come down to your advantages weighed against your liabilities. When we're talking about leverage, there's really two main types that we tend to think about, and those are positive and negative leverage, otherwise known as the carrot and the stick. Positive leverage is probably what you think of most when you think about negotiating power. It's what you have to offer that the other side wants. Take politics, for example. Some lobbyist group pays a lawmaker a generous sum of money for the privilege of having dinner together. And in return, the lawmaker just so happens to propose a bill that benefits that same lobbyist group. Now, granted, I'm in the United States and things might look a little bit different where you are, but hey, corruption's corruption no matter where you are. Cynicism aside, the second form of leverage, and honestly, the more powerful of the two, is negative leverage. Now, the most extreme versions of negative leverage are threats or blackmail. But all negative leverage really means is that one side has the ability to make the other side just you know, a little bit more uncomfortable than they probably would like to be. Just like positive leverage, negative leverage can take many forms, but it is often a lot further towards the manipulation end of the spectrum than I like to spend a whole lot of time talking about. But while we're dipping our toe in the manipulation end of the pool, let's talk about the prince. Nope, not him. Nope, not that guy either. We're talking about the book, The Prince, written by Machiavelli in 1532. Now, keeping in mind that this is pretty much a book just about how to take over the world, we're gonna fly past some of that cringy sociopath stuff. <laughs> but one of the questions he looks to answer in the book is whether it's better for a leader to be loved or feared. And by better, he was meaning better at maintaining power. What he eventually concluded is that a ruler can maintain power more effectively through fear than through love. Now, these two ruling types, fear and love, were pretty competitive when things were going generally okay in the society or city. But when times got tough, fear tended to play a much larger role. And it comes down to the fact that it is much harder to scale up someone's love for you than it is to scale up their fear. Which, side note here, anytime a politician says something that's meant to make you scared or angry at other people, that is a direct page out of this manipulation playbook. Now, taking a step back from world domination techniques for a second here, how is this relevant to you? Well, regardless if you're negotiating a raise at work or trying to convince yourself to finally start that diet, a person's actions will change only when the pain of doing nothing outweighs the pain of taking action. This can be physical pain, emotional pain, or even financial pain. And yes, there's plenty of nuance here. A combination of factors and emotions that are difficult to isolate. But the key thing to remember here and to recognize is that all of these situations where leverage is at play is really just a balancing act between what a person wants and what a person doesn't want, what a person fears and what a person simply isn't willing to live with or live without. And whichever side has more of these factors tends to be the way that decisions are made. Finally, there is a third type of leverage that deserves a brief mention, and that is normative leverage. This isn't so much something that one party actually has to negotiate with, as much as it's a norm that both parties tend to agree to that might adjust the outcome a little bit. Say for example, there's a general understanding that a pregnant woman should probably get the seat on that bus rather than the teenager. 
But beyond the shame of diverging from a norm, nothing's really forcing that teenager to give up his seat for the pregnant lady. Just to make this a little bit more relevant to what you're probably interested in here, say a company wants to pay a certain amount to do a certain job. Just because that employee might have an advanced degree does not mean they're gonna do that job better. But there's often a norm that more education a person has, the more they should be paid. I find this norm is actually pretty common and why overqualified individuals can be overlooked for job positions simply because the employer thinks they'll be expected to pay them more and they don't really wanna have to deal with that. So bringing this whole thing back to why we're here in the first place, how can we use this knowledge to help in our negotiations? Well, we just talked about how some of those norms like having a degree or years of experience might impact our initial salary offer. But honestly, these norms are not something you should rely on for your negotiation. Not least of which is because they're completely out of your control, but also because anybody can choose to completely ignore these norms at any time and likely face little to no consequences. So we stick to the first two types of leverage we talked about, positive and negative. So the next time you're trying to convince somebody to do something that you want or negotiate a better deal, just try and keep some of these factors in mind. You can even list out these positive, negative, and normative leverage factors for each situation, kind of like a, a pros and cons list. So you can really see what factors you have to work with and more ideally, which of these factors you can really lean on to give you that edge in any negotiation. Now, if you're interested in how to use some of this knowledge for specific negotiations, like your initial job offer or asking for a raise, then those videos are gonna be over here if they're out yet. If they're not out yet, they should be here soon. Uh, otherwise, I got my channel right here. And you know what? This is gonna be a video that YouTube recommends for you. So thanks for watching and I will catch you next time.